let's take a look at uh, GCO B6. This enters the business of congruence. And uh, you can see by basically the objective we're trying here to establish when two shapes are congruent. The objective says use geometric descriptions of rigid motions or isometric motions to transform figures to predict the effect of a given rigid motion on another figure. Also, given two figures, use the definition of congruence in terms of rigid motions to decide if they are indeed congruent. So here we start to finally uh, move from all of that good foundational stuff to the actual business of saying yes they are congruent. And the way we're going to use that is the new definition that says if I can take my figure and map it onto another figure using a single or series of isometric transformations, then they are congruent. So that's where again we get into this comp uh, uh, composite or composite, depends on what part of the country you're from, uh, transformation. <clears throat> and we look at uh, the motion from one to map it onto another. And we also look at the properties that exist to help us recognize what's taking place. What's the big idea? Congruence, that's the whole idea. What are our connections? Well, this is connecting us back to transformations and a sequence of them, connecting us forward to congruence and proof, and then uh, traps and pitfalls. Really, this was quite simple. By now, we've used isometric so many times, they knew that we were talking about a congruence relationship, so it seemed to follow easily. My reflections are you'll smooth through this if you've set the right tone earlier.